Hey, what's up guys? Today, we're installing some Lifter Valley vents. Okay, so this is going to be part one of a build series I'm going to do. Basically, long story short, I bought this 4x4 truck for its Vortec engine. Thought it was a bad um, pressure gauge, but turned out to be a bad cam bearing. And we're going to try and fix the cam bearings in this engine over here. But before we do that, I want to do some modifications I've never done before. So, I'm just going to say... I'm probably going to include a dis disclaimer in each of the videos because this is not going to be a by the book build. This is just me, you know, doing some stuff and slapping something together that's, yeah, a little, little, little janky. So, here's what we got. Okay, over here I got some stuff laid out, as you can see. Here are the vent tubes that I bought when, you, when I made my 100 subscriber episode. And these are our Speedway vents. And you can see they have a hex head on one end. And they're aluminum. These cost about 20 bucks. Now I got some brass ones over here I plan to use in my cheaper engine. They cost about 16 bucks or so. I got them off eBay. And then I got these at Menards for about 63 cents a piece. I, I don't know whatever that is for eight of them. But my local hardware store I pretty much wanted for these galvanized ones. A buck eighty or so. So it was pretty much the same as these. That's why I got these initially. And then I had to go to Menard for something else and I got these. Anyways, not to ramble off. The one major thing you can notice here is let me get these situated. The ID hole is different sizes. The cheaper tubes are larger. Now some may prefer to have this hex head for ease of install, but because of the spider over here, I've seen some people having to modify the hex. So I plan to try these out on the roller engines. And when I don't use a factory spider, I'll use these. You know, later on in another engine someday. Another thing I like to point out real quick is when you use these um, galvanized, you know, casts or steel, whatever they are, you may end up with a, where is it? casting line or other junk on the inside so they're not my favorite that's kind of why I got these brass ones they're nice and clean on the inside just FYI okay onto this junk over here now to do this we need a quarter NTP tap and this one you know they have it you can see right here this one here has a come on come over here <laughs> This one has a square on the end. They're both the same size, but it's a larger square than for you know more common tap handles. Like I had a grind on this one to get it to fit into this one, but still it wouldn't it was when you tighten it down it would just start just fit, but it wasn't good enough for the, the jaws in there to clamp down on it. They would they wouldn't grip it good enough. So this hover freight tap handle, which is quarter to half inch will not work even though it's larger because this is your basic quarter to half inch and this may this actually measures dang, I want to say below half inch but that's not what they, they mean they mean like threads or something not the actual size of the square now you could use a straight larger tap handle and this one I've, I've modified to fit in a tight area. You can see that usually it's much longer. I just wanted to show that real quick. But if you go that route, you're going to need a really long tap because, as you can see over here, that straight handle is not going to work. You're not even going to get in there. You can get long taps, but they're about, I want to say, mid 20s to somewhere in the almost up to 40. And I prefer to spend money on tools and more cheaper disposable taps. I think this was maybe a six or eight dollar tap. I can't remember at the moment. Of course, I'll link some of this stuff in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Now, this T handle tap handle <laughs> is a half to three quarter. So it will fit these quarter inch NTP larger square taps. But it was not cheap. It was, I want to say, about 
$53. And it's technically supposed to be used with, you know, it's got this adaptive for using with like a, you know, not not like a drill press, maybe a drill press, but I think it's more of like a mill or something like that. So, I don't know. I'm not a machinist. I'll probably never use this. I just got a <laughs> crappy old Harbor Freight drill press. But the one nice thing is it is larger, so you can get a better grip on it than this smaller one. So, just FYI. And also, before I forget, of course, if you really want to just, you know, do this, you know, bare bones cheap, you can use sockets and an extension or wrenches. Now, these are square pattern sockets, 7 sixteenths. They're just, you know, different drive sizes. And that's what you would need, but it's kind of a sloppy fit. Now, this one I've, I've ground down. So it's not perfect square, but it still would be kind of a little sloppy in there. And for my preference, the starter tap, I want to have a nice snug fit. I like this. I like, I like about the small T handles, the starter tap. And then if I have to, I'll go, I'll go to a larger straight handle. But you know, can't in this case. Anyways, if you want to use a wrench, this one fits into a 12 point. I think the 12 point socket. I think you can normally fit in there before you grind. I don't remember. I don't think you can get a, a, a six point. But if you're going to use an open end, you'd have to use a seven sixteenths, not the half inch. Just FYI, you know, we're not, we, you can check that out yourself. I just, you know, if you don't want to buy an expensive tap handle, whatever you want to do, this is how I'm going to do it. Now, this engine over here is not the best shape. I mean, you can clearly see it is all gummed up. I mean, look at this. It is nasty. So I'm not too worried about getting some shavings in this engine. But I'm still going to try and get it as little as possible in here because, you know, I don't want to clog up my filter or mess up my oil pump or whatever. It has to go through the oil pump to get to the filter. I mean, the small box Chevy pumps are kind of trash tolerant, but still, it's going to cause more wear and tear in my pump. So, I'm going to use this to set up here real quick, and I'll show you what I'm going to do to try and prevent getting shavings in this engine. Okay, and we're all set. I really think this is going to work. I mean, I, I, it, I don't know how to explain it, so I'm just going to show you. <laughs> what I've done is I've taken the trash bag and covered up the areas I don't want to get shavings. And, you know, tape doesn't really stick to greasy metal, so I've used all these really small magnets. See, in advance, I bought a pack of, I think about... 60 or 80, and I got 30 on there. I wrote down so I remember to get them all off. But I got this little tin of strong, small magnets on Amazon. You know, I'll link it in the description. So if you want to try it yourself, and I've always wanted to try and find a way to, you know, kind of you know, operate on an engine without getting the shavings everywhere. So the idea here is to tap the holes. But I know you're, you're thinking right now, it, it's, the shavings are going to fall down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh, come on. There we go. Rotate the engine on its side. And the holes are at an angle, so they're up right here right now. Oops, sorry. Let me look. At an angle, so the tap will be going up. So... Some of the stuff should fall out. And what doesn't, I will take, let me show you, this blow gun with a long straw. And there's the hole. Blow the chips out. It should work. I don't think it's going to be 100% foolproof. But I'm really interested to see if see how this is gonna work. I mean this is this is this is the part of the deal with the engine. It's something I can try new stuff on, something you wouldn't want to do on a good engine, so you know everything about this engine is gonna be an experiment. And you know I'm kind of excited to see how it's gonna turn out. So give me a minute we'll set up and we'll go get started. Okay, ran out to the garage real quick, get my creeper seat. So I get nice and low and have you know a good line of sight. And I think we're going to start off with one of the middle holes first. Just the, you know, the easiest access and such. And of course, I'm not going to be using a lube because this is cast iron. 
So I mean, it's got like you know graphite or whatever in it. So you know carbon, basically. So you know the tap doesn't need that. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of a chamfer first to start off. So here we go. So far, so good. I probably should get a magnet stick for when I do the other ones. I'm not going to make you watch me do them all. You know, we'll start this off and see how it goes, and then I'll just speed it up or skip to something else. You know, skip to the back part. <laughs> so, got my T handle. And that looks pretty good. That's the hardest part, getting this thing freaking straight. If this one doesn't go well, I might have to start the other ones with the engine upright so I can just get a better perspective of it. I mean, I can tell this way, but it's, the, it's this, you know. We'll see. I mean, it is a taper tap, so I'm hoping it kind of self-straightens a little better. Ships are coming out toward me. Let's see if I can zoom this real quick. Wrong one. Okay, progress report time. Things are not going as planned. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> you see, the other day I was doing something and I fell and I cracked a rib. I keep forgetting about that because I've never had a cracked rib before. So anything that uses, you know, moderate muscle <laughs> is no fun. <laughs> so there's no way I'm doing all these. <laughs> I'm, at this point I'm just going to try and finish up this one. <laughs> you know, I consider just putting out the video and finishing it later, but <sighs> that has not worked out well for me so far. I got, I got footage from... June that I haven't used and I'm probably never going to use. It's first from September that I'm going to try and reuse at some point. So, <laughs> anyways, not to ramble off. I switched over to the half inch ratchet and square socket to try and make it a little easier. And that is it is easier, but it's still you know like I said you know I do all eight of these. I'm going to be hurting big time. So I'm just going to have to do this for now, and you know in a later part we'll we'll I'll do the rest and show it. Um, what I want to show you also is, I've been pulling the tap out, and due to the magnets, it's been picking up a lot of shavings. I mean, I went and looked at the back side, and I got a shot of that, that you can see that the, the, the tip is, eh, I'm not fully there, so it hasn't poked out, I'll probably get another shot, but the shavings are sticking to the tap, because of the magnets. So, I'm pulling the tap out every now and then, and brushing it off into my waste basket. So, you know, added perk, bonus, or whatever you want to call it. But anyways, let me get back to getting this one done. <laughs> and here's a quick shot of the tap at its final depth. You can see it's just starting to stick through the hole. And there's a little bit of shavings on the inside of the block. So I will stick a magnet in there, or maybe a screwdriver with some tape, and get that little bit up before I blow it out. Okay, here's one more close-up shot. I'm gonna pull the tap out. This should be the final depth. I just checked it with the pipe fitting. As I said, I'm gonna pull the tap out. I wanna show you the shavings here real quick. And then we'll give it a blast of air from the back side. Now, it should be noted, I, I forgot to mention earlier, of course I was, you know, you know, moving the tap forward, then backing it up and breaking chips off the whole way. And of course, pulling it out every now and then to clean the tap because of all the magnetic shavings and such. Oh. Focus! <laughs> Anyways, you've seen it before. Let me give it a shot from the back side and we'll try that fitting. Oh. 
I don't want to forget to get those shavings with the magnet too real quick. Okay. I just got all the shavings in the backs with the magnet. Stick. And now we're going to get a blast of air. Okay, we'll try that pipe fitting out. And there it is. That depth should be good enough. I've already checked it with the spider. I don't know if the camera will show that here. We'll try it real quick. And it just clears the spider. And zoom off. So far, I think this is working out pretty good. Of course, I'll use a magnet to clean up as much, um, you know, chips shavings as I can before I tear all this off. But for now, I'm going to leave it as it is. It's going to, I'm just going to cover it back up. It can sit for another two weeks until I, I heal up, and then I'll finish it up. So, I mean, get this thing off. This is not how I want to wrap things up, but this is how it's got to be, because <sighs> my stupid ribs. I mean, I can at least tell you how I did it. I was walking out to the pole barn, and I was just, you know, thinking about something, and I tripped over this clump of freaking mildew or whatever, and I mean, mold, I mean, and that's what, whoop, and as I tripped, I kind of, you know, you kind of skip and stumble, and I threw my leg out and kicked my other leg out from under me. So when I fell, I threw my arm out to catch me, and somehow I put my rib, I put my elbow right into my rib. I mean, I hit hard, and and that's that's a sign that I probably need to lose a few pounds. So, you know, <laughs> holidays weren't too kind to me this year. I mean, the steroids from my poison ivy didn't help, but <laughs> anyways, I guess I can't really call this part one. This is going to be part half. <laughs> So, sorry I didn't finish it up. Tune in um, in the, a future episode, and I'll show it all done. But for now, to be continued, thanks for watching. Keep it real.